Hello, Snack Pack. Welcome back to Travel Snacks. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me and see me because I'm trying this microphone again, but now I have my headphones on and I can actually hear myself now. Let's see. Is that better? Uh, let me know if you can see and hear me. Um, welcome, welcome, ballerina 11 AA. Am I the first one? You are. Can't wait for the live. I have good news to share. Ooh, what is it? Um, hey, Erica. Awesome. Hey, Joanna. Uh, any current or future vehicle? Dole? Yes, indeed. Hey, Lou. I'm doing great. How are you? All right, Kim. Thank you so much. Can see and hear clearly and loudly. Awesome. Hey, Craze Pets. Hey, Vati. Bonjour. Awesome. Hey, Daniel. How are you? Welcome, welcome. How's everybody doing today? <clears throat> Hey, Taylor from Rhode Island. Awesome. Uh, hold on one second. Hey, Rebecca's in the house. Hey, Rebecca. Um, hold on one sec. Just checking. I got a message. Okay. Um, hey, Grant's in the house. Happy Snack Chat Friday Snack Pack. Grant is our moderator. He's awesome. He can answer any question pretty much that if I miss it, he'll answer it for you. And if somebody gets crazy, he's going to put them in timeout. Um, hey, Marie and Kent. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, Lucy on the go. Uh, hey, only fan. <laughs> I dozed off. That's that's fine. It's it's a nice day today. Um, I'll talk where I am in a couple of seconds. Hey, Tracy from Johannesburg, South Africa. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, Brandy. Uh, there's so many places that I want to go, including South Africa. Um, all right. So welcome, welcome everybody. And I am currently in San Diego, California. So let's see, what is the weather today? Because I'm wearing like a long sleeve. It was pretty chilly this morning. I slept uh, out here last night in my van. Um, but now it's kind of heated up. Let's see. Well, I say heated up, but it's 63 degrees. <laughs> but in the van, I, uh, you know, just popped open my window so I can get a little fresh air in here. So it's a little bit warm in here. Uh, but other than that, it's really nice. I like when it's in around the 60 degree range because then it's not too hot, too cold. Some people might consider that cold, but for me, I think it's great. Um, let's see. Hey, Daya, how, how are you doing? How are you doing? Um, Grant says beautiful weekend here going to be 70 on Sunday. 70 sounds delightful. So also, if you see anybody with a little icon with a star next to the name, that's a snack pack, uh, super snacker, uh, membership. So if you'd like to become part of the exclusive membership club, you can hit the little dollar sign under the chat and sign up and become like a little more exclusive on the travel snack train. Uh, so welcome everybody. I appreciate you guys being here on a beautiful Friday. Uh, as I mentioned, I made it out to San Diego. Um, I, let's see, let's see, where was I? I, I keep forgetting where I was. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think I was just at my parents' house last Sunday. And I had my doctor's appointment. So let me just kind of give you a quick little rundown of what's happening. And then we're going to get on to the topic. Um, so basically, I was having some really severe back pain since December. Um, the first time I went to the hospital, they found pneumonia in my lungs, or at least in my right lung. And so I went through antibiotics. But since then, my back's been really hurting my backs and my, my backs. I ain't got two backs. I got one. <laughs> my back and my ribs has been really, really hurting, but really only at night when I lay down. So I tried to deal with it as long as I could. And then I just felt that for my health's sake, I needed to come back to California. So I started driving back a few weeks ago and I finally made it back to California and I had already pre-scheduled my doctor's appointment. So I finally had my appointment yesterday. And it's funny because I asked if I sent a message ahead asking if he could go ahead and order an MRI because the hospital that I was at before, they said, you're going to probably need an MRI. But my doctor's office was like, no, you need to come be seen first. So I went in yesterday and, you know, he asked me what was going on in more detail. And I explained it 
to him and he said, you know, the first thing I want to do is just get x-rays of your of your spine and of your ribs. So um, I was like, I feel like that's going backwards, but okay. And he said, the thing is, is if he said, if I do an MRI, I'm not going to do anything with it because as a primary care doctor, I guess, I mean, he can read it, but it won't go any further. So what he said he wanted to do was he wanted to refer me to a physical medicine doctor. I was like, that sounds fake. I've never heard of a physical medicine doctor, but apparently it's a real thing after I looked it up or actually I was talking on the phone to my friend Yvonne and she looked it up and told me what it was after my appointment. So he said, it's not physical therapy. It's physical medicine. And I said, is that like orthopedics? And he's like, no, it's physical medicine. So I guess it has to do with like, you know, I don't know. I can't even describe it now. But if you look it up, it makes sense. It even has to do with like pain and your like the connections with your brain and stuff like that. And your back and your spine and I don't know all the stuff. So it, it makes sense. So he's so he referred me to a physical medicine doctor and he ordered x-rays. I went down and got x-rays yesterday and they only took x-rays of my spine. And I asked the technician, I was like, aren't you going to take imaging of my ribs? And he's like, no, it's not ordered. So I was like, I mean, that's important because my ribs have been really hurting. So I had to go back upstairs to my doctor, to my doctor's office and talk to them again. And he's like, oh, well, this, I thought we were just going with the spine. I'm like, no, it's also the ribs. So he reordered or uh, he ordered uh, imaging of my ribs as well. So I'm just kind of waiting um, on the results, but it was just yesterday. Um, and then I got the referral really quickly for the medicine or the physical medicine doctor. So I called this morning, they had the referral. So I have an appointment this coming Wednesday, which is really great because, you know, I don't know how it is across the U.S., but in California, when you try to make an appointment for anything, it's like they're booked out months in advance. So I was really grateful to get an appointment that quickly. So uh, so this coming Wednesday, I'll have the appointment with that doctor and we'll see what's what's happening. Um, it's funny because I have been feeling better than I have been um, in terms of my back and ribs, but the pain is still there. So I, I really want to find out what's going on. So that's pretty much what's happening. So I'll be in the San Diego area uh, until Wednesday and we'll see what happens from then on. I don't know whatever what's going to I don't know what they're going to say. So I don't know what other tests they need or whatever. So I guess I'll just play it one day at a time. Taylor says, I really enjoy your travels, have always wanted to travel in an RV, but don't think it will happen. If you find your way to Rhode Island, let's dine at the shore. We have a gem of a state, my treat. Uh, I've been to Rhode Island and I loved Rhode Island. I thought it was really awesome, really beautiful. Um, I hope you do get a chance to travel in your RV because it's a great experience. Uh, hey, Katrina, 50 degrees in Washington. I actually like 50 degree weather. I think it's nice and crispy. Hey, Thomas is in the house from Northern New York State. Marie says, happy Good Friday. Amen. Uh, Sh Sharami, um, how is it going? Hey, Art Dog, doctors don't pay attention as much as they should sometimes. Glad it worked out, though. Yes, I know. It's funny because I feel very strongly that you really do have to advocate for yourself. Um, I think a lot of times maybe doctors have too much on their plate, too many, um, too many patients. To the point where they're going from one person to the next, I would imagine that's got to be very stressful trying to remember, like you're going from one person's issues to somebody that has totally different issues to the next person, like all day, just back to back. Um, so I think because we are our own body, we have to convey what we need and we need to be strong about, like firm about what we feel we need because, you know, you know, I think most people will go in and they'll just give them like a basic thing like, oh, you need this, you need this prescription, you need this, whatever. But with things that are a little bit more tricky, I think you really need to be like, no, I'm feeling pain here. I need this kind of imaging or whatever to determine whatever. So um, I think it's really important to get checked out and make sure that you advocate for yourself. Um, there's a lot of overbooking. Where Yes, there's so much, so much overbooking. Um so let's see. Um, I also want to mention that I'm going to be taking a break. 
coming up soon. So we'll have one more live stream next Friday, and then I'm probably going to take two weeks off. Uh, I'm going to pre-schedule some vi some regular videos and shorts scheduled out during that time, but I am burned out. I haven't taken a break in a very long time. Uh, I know it may sound funny to a lot of people that, you know, you're like, you live in a van, you, you know, you're on vacation every day, but it's really not. It's really not. A, it's a lifestyle. Like, you know, living in the van is just a normal, for me, it's a normal existence. You know, I get up, I have to do the things that's involved in living in a van, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, and, you know, just with any job, YouTube is a job. I, you know, I have a lot of things that I work on and it's really a lot of work. So uh, I'm going to try to pre-schedule out as many videos as I can during that time. But I really feel that now would be a good time to do that before like the summer months come and stuff. So, uh, so anyways, we'll have one more next week. So I'll talk about it again and I'll put some reminders up on the community tab. But for the most part, uh, I'm going to be taking a break from the live streams. Um, so just wanted to make sure I said up front so we can just kind of talk about that. Also, I have some news that I'm going to be sharing, um, around that time. And also a couple changes to the channel uh, as well. So, uh, it's going to be, a, it's going to be exciting. Uh, I think I need this break to like prepare for what's next. And, uh, it's, I know I hate when people do that, like, oh, I'm going to do something. And then they don't tell you what it is. So I'm sorry in advance, but I just, I'm trying to say as much as I can without saying it, but, um, yeah, I'm excited. So I just like to keep you guys in the loop, especially those that come on these live streams. These are like the true snack packers. You guys are the true, you know, family because you come on and we chat and you know, it's, it's great. So, um, again, thank you guys for being here. Uh, hey, Mary's in the house. I can't believe you came through Tucson and you didn't come. I know. I, it, I literally drove through. I think I parked to eat and that was it. <laughs> and that was as far as it went. Um, so I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. If I had more time, then I definitely would have. I There was a few people along my journey that were like, oh my gosh, you know, stop through or come see me or I want to meet up. And I just felt like I needed to keep driving and get back so I can get to this doctor's appointment. Um, hey, Jane from Dayton, Ohio. Afternoon and evening temps are 50s to 60s, mornings in the 30s. I can't start my veggie garden. Oh, I bet not. Yeah, but that sounds nice, though. Uh, Caltrina, Washington State. I live in the Pacific Northwest. Awesome. Lucy on the go. 50s and 60s is perfect in my book. Yeah, I think so, too. I lived in Paradise Hills in San Diego eons ago. I hope you find out what's going on. Yes, it's extremely important to advocate for once. Yes. Kim says, how exciting. Two-week vacation, I'd say, as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Grant. Thank you. Grant has definitely been, like, uh, advocating for my for me. He's been like, you need a break. You need to take a break. And a couple other snack packers have talked to me and said, yeah, I think you need a break. Um, I've been feeling tired. I've been feeling uh, less than 100%. I feel like I'm a little burnt out. And I think it's just time to, like, take a break, clear my mind out, and just you know, come back really refreshed. So I'm excited for that. Um, you need your own time sometimes too. Yes. Thank you. Brandy says we all need a break now and then. So you do you and take care of it. Thank you so much. Oh, Mary coming through with the $5 hype little, is that like a little hippo? That is so cute. Super chat in the house. Awesome. Let me see if my things are working again because last week it wasn't. Oops. No, it's still not working. So we're going to get some random sounds, um, which is kind of fun, I guess. But it's interesting. I guess we'll do this one. It's a duck call. And they got all kinds of weird things like possessed, scary organ zombie the heck i don't want any of those thank you so much mary i appreciate you so so much hey stay tuned uh thank you so much thank you marie hey debbie from idaho awesome i missed the back i missed missed the back updates how's it going it's going good i actually am feeling better 
Um, but when I lay down, it still hurts a little bit, but not as not as like stabbing as it was uh, a few months ago. Uh, it's actually manageable right now without me taking anything extra, but it's definitely still there. So I'm like, and my doctor just has like a basic theory because obviously he, you know, hasn't seen x-rays and hasn't, you know, doesn't know what's going on. But he said, you know, sometimes if like, like there's something like pinching on the nerve or whatever, like the, I'm just making this up because I don't know the terms, but like the little ducts, if they start to like narrow and, you know, pinch down, that could be a factor too. Um, and, you know, he talked about a few things like what his theory might be because like why it's only happening at night because of the way that some of the bones are angled. I don't know. Um, but I really hope that the physical medicine doctor will have a little more insight. Um, hey, lovely Bree J. How are you? Um, <laughs> hey, Gilberto's in the house. Love your expressions when the sound. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mariposa Sueña. How are you? Hey, Tatiana's in the house. Um, yes, I, I'm not leaving YouTube for good. I'm just leaving for a couple weeks. And, you know, I'm sure I'll still probably answer some comments because <clears throat> that's just how I am. But for the most part, I just want to, you know, kind of take a minute. Um, amen. Amen. Marie says, I've got to leave. My grandchildren are on the way for Easter sleepover. Uh, amen. Have fun with your family. Thank you for popping in. Um, and yes, thank you for uh, moderating Grant. Thank you. Oh, as always. All right. So, um I'm actually parked um, pretty close to one of my friends and we're going to have dinner after this. So I like to honor the time um, with her. I'm going to spend the weekend with her and uh, <coughs> excuse me, my throat is dry. I need to be drinking more water, but right now I'm currently drinking this kombucha. This is the best brand in my opinion, Kavita. And right now I'm having the mango lime. It's delightful. So, uh, so anyways, I'll be spending the weekend with her. Um, and then we're doing like a little brunch with some of her friends that I'm also friends with on Sunday. Oh, sorry. My sister's calling. I'll have to call her back. Um, so we're going out to dinner tonight. So we're going to try to keep this live stream to an hour ish. Um, because we're going to this place that has the best tortellini in the existence of tortellinis and i just love it good of italian food their pizza is pretty good too uh it's it's really great so i'm really looking forward to doing that um uh, carl says i'm wondering which would be the better solution should i get a camper or a truck topper oh the camper would be more comfortable but the topper is lighter and would be easier for stealth camping hmm interesting um, better solution to get. I don't know. I'm not like. I'd say. Okay, if okay, if you're giving me these, just look at these little hearts. How did you guys come up with these little hearts that are popping up on the screen? Do you guys see the hearts too? I keep seeing little red hearts floating up. I've never seen that before. I've been doing these live streams for years, and I've never seen that. Please tell me if you guys see that little, those little hearts. Okay, if you're going by just this little phrase that you just gave me, between comfort and being lighter and stealthier, go with comfort. Go. With, how are you doing the hearts? How are you guys doing that? Who's doing that? Somebody did 100%. What's happening? That's wild. Hold on. Let me take a little. This is funny. I've never seen this. I wonder if it's coming from a different program. Let's see. Now let me play this back for you. Wait. Ah, stop. Can you guys see that? Wait, is it playing? Oh, no, wait. Look it. Where is that coming from? That is so funny. Um, okay, so I would go with comfort because 
when you live and travel in a vehicle, you need all the comfort you can get. And I have my thoughts and theories about stealth camping. If you're in anything other than a car, a minivan, or an SUV, you're not really stealth. Stealth is like parking where you're inconspicuous, that people really don't know. If you are in a van of pretty much any size or an RV or a camper, people know you're in there. I mean, you're camping, like you're sleeping in there. Most most people would know that. So I would say I wouldn't worry about stealth. I would just say, you know, when people say stealth to me, I just take that as like, try to not stick out as much as you can. But people are pretty much going to know if you have a camper or, you know, a truck or, you know, a, a truck topper, go with comfort. That's my advice. Go with comfort. Um, Grant says, if you could ask Yvonne to check her DMs more often. <laughs> okay, I'll tell her. I will tell her. Um, Cheryl, welcome, welcome, welcome. I got to post a picture of me and Cheryl. Me and Cheryl got together uh, on my way uh, to California. So that was really awesome. Uh, so nobody sees the hearts except for me. Um, let's see. Hey, deja vu. Welcome. Cheryl says, it's me. It gives you the option to send them. How? Is, are you on a phone or on a computer? I'm so curious now. Teeny weeny stitches. We have a button to hit with choices. Where? It's new. Oh my gosh. Uh, Black React TV. Welcome. Mary says, I can't find with the hearts where the hearts are. Me neither. I don't know. I Oh, from your iPhone. All right. Well, apparently, if you have an iPhone... Hey, Kentucky woman, welcome. Then I guess, I guess, you know. Uh, Mimi, he is risen indeed. May your holiday weekend be blessed. Thank you so much. Uh, a new subscriber here from Maryland. Awesome, welcome. Alisa Ellen, welcome, welcome. New subscriber, everybody welcome, Alisa. Nothing for the PC. Okay, so I guess if you're on an iPhone, you can, you know, hit the little hearts and the little like other emojis flying up. I love it. Hey, Randy, I'm good. How are you? Keisha, I have an iPhone, but I don't see the option. That's interesting. Maybe you need an update. I don't know. I've never, I didn't get any messaging around this, so I, I don't really know. Um, I posted this on my community tab, but uh, I've officially, I officially no longer celebrate Easter as a traditional holiday, uh, but I do celebrate Passover now. Um, and it's during the same time. And again, I never miss an opportunity to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. He is risen indeed. So I say that's blessed. That's blessings. And if you can spend time with family and friends, you know, that's awesome too. So I, I love and appreciate the sentiment and the gathering, you know, and all the great that comes from the Easter holiday. I just don't specifically say happy Easter or celebrate Easter, which as I mentioned on the post is kind of bittersweet because Easter has been my favorite holiday for years, but just from research and finding out what it really stems from, I, I just can't in good conscience celebrate it anymore. So I celebrate Passover, which is a biblical feast in the Bible, and it's still awesome. We're still, you know, all in a celebratory situation. Um, awesome. Uh, Katrina, I like the idea of having a truck with a truck camper on top. Yeah, I think it's nice. Just J1900. It's a cool feature for the live videos. Oh, that's so cool. Wandering Willow Blossom. I'm on iPad. It has five options. Oh, cool. Hey, Mommy4. Welcome. Um, Black React TV. I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church. Hey, you know what? I haven't been to church in a while. Um, I go when I can. Um, I think it's important to try to get to church when you can, and I will be trying to get to church more often. Um, but I think definitely it's you know, it's important to stay in your Bible and to make connections with others as well. Um, Kentucky woman, the one Sunday I do not attend is Easter. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I love these little hearts. All right. So let's get on to the topics. Uh, so as the title said, I'm no longer a minimalist. There's things I'm like no longer doing. I'm really getting my life together in my, my beliefs and thoughts. Um, and minimalism is something that's huge, huge. If you go on YouTube or any platform and you just type in minimalism, there's so many videos and so many just thoughts and all the things. And I'm not putting down minimalism by any means. Also, 
I learned that there's something called maximalism. And it's typically in the interior design space. It's basically layering different interior elements, different textures. And it looks like kind of cluttered, but also awesome. Look it up. It's fascinating. Um, so I filmed a video today that's going to go up tomorrow, which is going to talk in more detail about this. Um, but basically, you're going to hear it first. I'm creating something. I'm inventing it. And maybe if somebody already invented it, just let me know. And then I'll, you know, take a step back. But I've never heard of this. And I looked it up and I didn't find anything online. But I'm creating something called modemalism. It's the step between minimalism and maximalism. It's moderation, modemalism. Now, I didn't invent moderation. <laughs> but moderation has been around forever. My mom had, has always told me, to live in moderation. And the older I get, the more I, why has my hand been up this whole time like this? Uh, um, I've known about moderation and I've lived by it a lot in my life. And the times when I don't stick by moderation is when I usually get burned. And I want to give you a few examples because maybe it'll make more sense. But um, the reason I just came up with that name is because I feel that over time, when somebody jumps on board with something, they get invested into it, whatever, whatever it is, whether it's politics, religion, um, veganism, minimalism, all the isms, whatever. And what, what tends to happen is people get on either side of something and then the divide between people gets bigger and bigger and people get aggressive they get extreme in their views and beliefs and it causes strife between people. And one of the things that I've noticed in the minimalism space, and I'm not saying everybody, but I'm saying, I think the, the people that really get into it, just like with anything, like there's always the extremes. And what, what tends to happen is minimal is not enough. You got to be extreme, supreme, minimal, like minimalism. You know, I have six shirts to my name. Well, I have three. And if you don't have three or two shirts, you're not a minimalist, you know, or um, I have, you know, um, let's see, I have, I only have four plants in my house. <laughs> you're not a minimalist. That's excessive. Four plants. How dare you? You need to have one plant. And if you don't have one plant, then you're not part of our club anymore. And you're just not a minimalist. You're really not a true minimalist or a real. I hate when people say you're not a real this or you're not a true this. You're not a real Christian. You're not a real man. You're not a real this. If you don't do it my way, you're not real. And I'm just over the extreme views. And it's okay to have strong opinions and strong thoughts. And it's okay to even share it in a loving, kind respectful manner. I actually respect people that have that that stand for something and stand on something. But it's when people step over the line and make others feel bad for doing it a little bit differently than they do it. Because who's to say that you're the authority on a uh, topic? You know, minimalism, I believe it's and I'm, I'm not a scholar here, but minimalism was created, you know, because there's too much excess, especially in America. I agree with that. But at the same time, you know, you, you can even look at something as an example, like couponing. Couponing is great. Couponing is awesome. You know, you clip some coupons or you can even do them online now and you can save some money for your family or for yourself. You, you can get some things for free. Even sometimes if you cl uh, clip the correct coupon uh, variations or whatever, but then you see people that have like, lost their minds. They're like, I got to get my whole order for free. And then they, they have stockpiles of things that they'll never use in their lifetime. Why? Why? Why do you need that? Unless you're, unless you're kind of person that's like getting it and then you're giving it to different organizations, you know, um, like homeless organizations or battered women organizations, or, you know, you're, you're sharing the wealth. To be like so extreme and then if somebody is a couponer and they're like, yeah, like I clipped, 
you know, $10 worth of coupons. <laughs> You're not a couponer because you didn't get your order for free. Why? Why are we putting people down for, for enjoying something? And I wrote down a couple of other examples and then we'll read the comments. Um, but let's see. Ah. Um, okay. So for example, I just mentioned the couponing one. So for example, when it comes to work, you know, I don't know how it is in other countries, but so I'm, I'm an American, so I, I can only speak from America's perspective, but you know, we have this idea that more work equals better status. You know, I work 80 hours a week. You only work 60. You just work a 40 hour work week. Oh my gosh, you're lazy. You know, it, it's extreme. It's extreme. Or you got people that are like, you know, I only work, you know, one hour a day. And if you work a traditional 30 or 40 hours, then you're too stupid. Why? Why do people need to put other people down for doing it their way. If you just, if you figured out a way to work one hour a week or four hours a week, good for you. That's amazing. Um, but to put somebody down because you are on the extreme of other, either end, why? And then the last example is like in the fitness. <laughs> there's a million examples, but there's always these extremes. Like if you put one carb in your mouth, you're poison. You're poisoning yourself. You know, if you do anything outside of what other people deem to be the only way to eat, then you're out. You're just out. Or if you don't spend, you know, two hours in the gym, you're lazy. It's not enough to go in there for 15 minutes and just get a nice little quick workout or take a walk on the treadmill. No, no longer. It's got to be extreme. And this, this falls on the, this falls, uh, the same way from the other side, you know, people that are like, you know, don't shame me for my body, you know, because I want to gain all the pounds in the world. And people are celebrating that. So these extreme ideas, listen, do whatever you want to do, but there's got to be a way that we have more common ground. So the more I thought about it and I'm like, I don't want to be part of like the minimalism to where I feel so deprived because I can only have one shirt. <laughs> and so I was like, what's, what is a better solution? And in my opinion, it's being moderate, being moderate, modemalism, embrace it. Hashtag modemalism. I created it. I invented it. Um, I don't know if I did, but that's the word that I came up with to, to fit in between. I want to have 10 shirts and I want to be okay with it. I don't need 50 shirts, but if I want to have a nice little wardrobe, you know, I don't have to have a wardrobe that's, you know, a 10 times walk-in closet. I don't have to have one shirt. I can have a normal life, a normal wardrobe. And I will say that the times where I've been moderate in my life, it's been, I've, I've gotten to do more things in my life. I've gotten to experience the best of life when I try more things and not try to be extreme on either end. So if some, if you guys have other opinions, I'd love to hear it. So let's jump to the comments. Let's jump to the comments. And thank you for all the hearts and stuff. I'm going to have to look into that. And it's pretty awesome. Because I go on, I watch certain people's live streams as well. And I want to do it for them as well because it seems pretty cool. Amen, Mary. Um, hey, Deja Vu from California. Carl says, I used to go to church until someone spread bad lies about me. And the next thing I know, no one would talk to me and avoided me. I don't need to be around a bunch of hypocrites. I mean, that's terrible. And I think a lot of times people have such deep church hurts or have been, you know, gossiped against or there's there's all kinds of stuff that happens in church because we're all regular people sinfully doing sinful things. Um, one thing that I heard is um, on this podcast, the person was saying, if you hear somebody playing Beethoven badly, you don't blame Beethoven, you blame the person playing it. And so for church, it relates the same way is you don't blame 
the church, like the church in general or Jesus for people playing the church badly or being terrible to you. So t keep that into consideration. Don't give up on church in general. But, you know, I think that's a bummer. And I'm sorry that happened to you. Uh, Mimi says, the thanks snackers for praying for Pearl. Stage four liver cancer, May 22. She's facing two upcoming lung surgeries. Prayers appreciated for the little Pearl for complete healing in Jesus name. Praise God. Okay, we're praying. I'm still praying for little Pearl. So everybody keep your prayers up for Pearl and Mimi's family. Oh, I am definitely praying for that. I'm definitely praying for that. Oh, goodness. Um, she's almost three. Okay. Thomas said, I thought modemalism was a nomad using an old school internet modem. That's funny. Hey, you never know. You never know. Yes. Lifting Pearl. Hey, Jay's in the house from Sorgi Stories. Welcome, Jay. Um, I guess I would be considered an anti-minimalist. I like my stuff. Hey, you know what? There's nothing wrong with having stuff. There's nothing wrong with having stuff. I think it does go to an extreme sometimes when you might be featured on an episode of Hoarders. That's too much. Grant, I don't know. I've never been to your house. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Grant. Grant posted the links. If you would like to support the channel further, you can either become a member or you can, you know, do a little donation, but you don't have to. Um, but thank you, Grant, for posting those links. I appreciate that. Uh, Carl says, I work 50 to 70 hours a week. I've worked 57 hours a week most of my life, and now I'm getting older, and I don't even want to work 40. I mean, I'm tired just thinking about 70 hours a week, which is funny because I do work a lot. But I guess in my mind, I don't, I don't know. I, I enjoy what I do, so it doesn't feel like work a lot of times. Hey, JJ, how are you? Thomas says, it's called narcissism. Oh, goodness. Um, Kaltrina, less is more, as they say. Yes. Mariposa Suenia. I'm glad you're you're addressing the subject. Extremists work my last nerve, especially the judgmental ones. Yes, it's just gotten out of hand. And I really believe truly in my heart that the, the best way forward is together. And the more common ground we can find with each other, the better. I, I personally believe there might be like a 1% that's out of this equation. But I, I, I personally believe that there's something I can learn from every single person in this whole earth even if it's terrible even if even if it's something that i can be like okay i never want to do that or i don't want to be like that person or they're a cautionary tale or i've learned what i don't want to be like even in the negative you can learn something from everybody and you can learn a lot there's a lot i believe there's a lot more good people uh in the world and i think that we can all learn from each other even if we disagree I think there's plenty to be learned and, and, and people aren't just one thing. I'm not just a content creator. I'm a million other things. I'm not just a Christian. I'm a million other things. And so are you. Everybody has so many different facets of themselves. And to be like, oh, you vote that way, canceled. I don't want nothing to do with you. Why? Because there's so many other things that you could probably relate to somebody on. And everybody needs to be a little more forgiving and a little more open. I'm not saying open-minded like to make you try to change your thoughts or anything. I'm just saying to people need to be a little bit more like, okay, I can hear where you're coming from. I don't agree with you, but I, I hear you. And I think that's just really important. Um, Grant says, I checked my Samsung phone and couldn't find a button. Maybe it's an iPhone thing. Hmm. I'm gonna have to look this up afterwards because that's really interesting. I've, I, this is the first time I've ever seen this. Uh, Brandy says moderation is a great is great for the most parts of most parts of life. Yes, my social life. I have too many things. I get overwhelmed. Yeah, that's true too. Um, there's been times where I've had, you know, I feel it when I start to get too many things. This is mostly when I lived in a, you know, an apartment or whatever or a house. I start to feel it. Like I'm like, this is too much. The cabinets are a little too full. Mm -mm, it's it's too many things. Um. Taylor, if people could just lighten up and do what works for them, well, we would be better off. At almost 64 years old, I have lived quite a colorful life. I followed my path, made money, retired at 48. Ooh, look at you. That's something to be proud of. That's awesome. And I agree. If I think everyone needs to lighten up. Let people do their own life. And don't, don't be like trying to push. You can express yourself. But when it comes to you telling somebody else what they need to do, mm -mm, no, no, no. 
Cheryl says, I think that people just need to stop judging others altogether. It's, it is not for us to judge it. That is God's job, not mine. Actually, I think in the Bible, it says it, it's okay to judge, but it's, uh, cause we all have judgments. Even that, even you saying that is a judgment. Like we all have judgments and that's okay. Cause we have, we're logical beings. We're humans. So we have a, a mechanism to allow us to judge and make judgments. But the Bible says whatever measure of judgment you place on other people is the measure that will be measured back to you. So if you're a harsh person, if you're mean spirited, if you constantly have negativity and complaints and all these things, then that's the same measure you're going to get back. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Um, so I think it's okay to make judgments, but if it's mean spirited, I see that's, I think that's maybe where you're going, Cheryl. And I agree with you. Like there's no need for, for mean spirited judgments and amen. Mimi says, yep. That's me swinging from one end to the other. Middle can be a good place. Yeah, I think the middle, sometimes being in the middle is just fine. And, you know, nobody like, like nobody wants to be in the gray. People like black and white, but sometimes it's nice to be in the gray. I like a nice gray day. I like a little, a little stormy day. Maybe a lot of people don't, but I think it's nice to have a moderate lifestyle. People are so extreme, if, even like with money, you know, it's like I either want to live, you know, a free spirited, like, you know, almost like with the van life movement or whatever. There's some people that have just like given up on life and they're just like, I'm going to go live in this basically in the streets and I'm not going to try anymore. I've seen it. And then there's people that are like, I got to make 40 trillion bazillion dollars or I'm not a worthy person. Why? It's OK to make a moderate income. Pay your bills. Live a regular life. It's really okay. It's really okay. Uh, Grant says, no, I'm not a hoarder. That would be Jackie. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes, prayers up for Pearl. Yes, prayer, prayers for Pearl, for sure. The Panther 007, I see kombucha in the back. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Let's all take... Uh, usually, I've been drinking water, but right now, I'm just drinking this because I used to not like kombucha, but... It, if you've never liked kombucha, try different brands. I would recommend Kavita. This is not sponsored. I'm just telling you, I've tried a lot of different brands. This is the best one. And actually, I when I was at my mom and dad's house, I made both my parents try the, it was the pineapple peach. And both of them were like, oh, I'm so shocked because I hated kombucha. And they both said, oh, I could actually, actually drink that. So, you know. Give it a try or not. It's up to you. Daya says, I agree with you, Allison. Modemalism is the key. Yes. I love that you used that word. <laughs> it is a great key. Uh, Charlotte. Hey, thank you, Charlotte, for being here. Hey, Savannah. I'm definitely a modemalist. Yes. Just somewhere floating in the middle. It's okay. It's awesome. Mimi says, listen to people. Stop thinking you know everything you don't. I don't. Listen to your Wait, listen to your adult children. They might teach you something. Don't marginalize people. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. I agree. Yeah, because it's funny because if you've noticed, one of the top things people say when you talk to them is they'll be like, I know, I know, I know, I know. And I, I'm guilty of it too. But sometimes what we think we know is surface level or something we've read once and then we never dug deeper or we never listened to other people that might know more than we know. So I try to take a step back and be like, maybe I don't know. So maybe let me just zip my lip and just listen. <laughs> step Van Dan, big hugs from, hugs from Minnesota. Welcome, welcome. Mimi says, this is a great live stream. Thanks for sharing. It's up there with the cemetery walk. Ooh, awesome. I love to hear it. Lucy on the go, um, uh, modemalist. I like it. I've tried minimalism for a short time. I prefer modemalist. Owning two sets of clothing exactly alike is just too min militant for me. Yes, you know, and it's like, listen, if if a person likes living that way, I'm st again still for it because that's moderate to them. But you know, not everyone else, not everybody wants to live like that. I want to have a low flare in my life. I want to have a couple different, you know, a couple different outfits. It's okay. Cheryl says I am old, and when was younger, I had friends who were all walks of life. And it was wonderful. You're not that old Cheryl, first of all. And second of all, I, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, 
like, I'm not saying you got to spend all your time with people you disagree with, but it's like, you know, be open to people, like let people talk. Um, hey Rose, someday I'll be on time. That's okay. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see, Kaltrina, random question. Have you ever thought of getting a dog or a pet? I watch some van lifers who have pets. I want to move into my car, but I have two dogs I want to take with me, but I probably need a van. There's many people that live in cars, SUVs, and even minivans that have pets. I personally would never because I like to get up and go and get in and out of my van too much. Also, my van gets hot and cold and I would be too worried about my pet. But there's many nomads that live in vehicles, even content creators you can watch on YouTube that live in smaller spaces with pets. Uh, you have to do what's right for you and the, what's right for the pet. is if. But I, I will say, in my opinion, if you're going to travel with pets, I think it's your duty, absolute duty to get those dogs or pets or whatever out of the van, out of the vehicle, run them, let them get exercise, let them get out of the cramped space as we should as humans, because it's not fair to coop up an animal in a, such a small space for all times. I just, I, I just think a, a pet needs places to roam. That's just my opinion. Out for fun, one, two, three, from, hello from rainy Boise, Idaho. Happy Friday. Welcome. Uh, I love a good rain. JJ, I believe if you have what you need and live humbly with the gift and purpose the Lord gave you, your life will be fulfilled with his blessing and grace. He has a plan. Have faith. Yes, I agree. I agree with that. Definitely living humbly is a great way to go. Hey, Rands of Healing. Like they say in the military, two is one and one is none. Mm, that's good. That's deep. Two is one and one is none. I love it. Rose says, every time I hear, I mean, every time I ever was harsh, I found out that I didn't know what I was talking about. You know what's funny, Rose? If I think back on some of the times where I was like so stern on something, where sometimes people that I loved and cared about would try to tell me something, I'm like, no, you don't know what you're talking about. And then, you know, like you said, years later, you're like, oh, shoot. I learned some new information. If I would have listened, maybe, you know, and I think there's times where we have to go through that. We have to walk through the fires of our thoughts and we have to come on the other side so we can have an appreciation. And I think it's, you know, something I've been learning even the older I get is to apologize more, to be, you know, to say sorry when I'm wrong or sorry when I've been harsh or, you know, maybe been too extreme. Um, yeah, I think there's definitely been times where I've been on one end and I'm just like, whoa, I was super wrong. Carl says, we got eight inches of snow Tuesday in North Dakota. The groundhog predicted six more months of winter. Oh, no. Eight inches. That's too much. Uh, JJ, kombucha smells funny to me. It's like basically smells like vinegar. If you can get past, like, you got to kind of get past the smell a little bit. Taylor says, the middle is great. It is like Switzerland. I live a quiet, low-key life. I pay my bills and help others who aren't as lucky as I am. Low-key. I love the low-key. I love the low-key. This is the, this. that's a great life. Cheryl says, the Bible also says, judge not lest you be judged. Now, I can think that my coworkers are lazy, but it doesn't mean that they are bad people. Perhaps they just hate the job. You just never know. Perfect point. Perfect point. You know, we, we have our own thoughts and judgments, but it doesn't mean that it's the absolute truth. That is subjective truth. We all have subjective truth. And this is where I differ with some of my friends because I don't agree with the statement, my truth because I don't own the truth. I don't believe anyone owns the truth. You can have your own experiences, thoughts, opinions, but you don't have your own truth. Truth is truth. So that's my opinion. And even in that, that's, you know, something that's my experiences, my thoughts, my wisdom, but it doesn't mean that um, my subjective truth is true, you know? But there is the truth, and I believe that it's Jesus Christ. But that's another side note on what I believe. Um, Taylor says, I too love that cemetery walk. Awesome. I loved making that video. It was really, it was really awesome. Uh, Senior Station. Yeah. Hello from uh, Aventura, Florida. Diane Pearl, Perla and I watch you every day. Awesome. 
Welcome. Thank you for showing us such an incredible side of life. Thank you so much for watching. I love it. I definitely love that. Hey, Kenny from East Texas. Friends of Healing. The kombucha with chia seeds in it is so yum. Have you tried it? Kavita brand is one of them. I've never tried that. I've never even, I don't even think I've heard of that. Okay. I'm definitely going to give that a try. Lee says, I'm a minimalist. That's, it's called poverty. Well, I don't know if you're choosing that or not, but if you are, then more power to you. If it's, if you're not choosing it, then I pray for you and I hope you can, you know, get a little bit more. JJ, three sides to a situation. There's yours and the truth. I love it. I love that. It's true. Everyone has their own side. And if a third party comes in and they're like, both y'all wrong, or both of you are, are kind of right, you know? And that's why I say at the end of the day, be kind to each other and be loving because he just, we don't know everything. We're all just like bopping around on this earth, just trying to figure it out. And so to be kind is the best, best lane to be in to be give people the benefit of the doubt don't immediately jump to conclusions um reigns of healing oops i meant gt's kombucha not kavita uh not kavita oh okay i think i've heard of gt's oh yeah thank you yeah don't forget to put a like on it uh thank you daya for mentioning that um so basically that's kind of my thoughts on minimalism uh, again i'm not saying don't do minimalism or don't appreciate it and i do actually appreciate it i think it came i think it came out of a a solid place a solid place i don't know who invented it but i think it came up from a good place because i think there's a lot of excess too much excess honestly i think the american dream includes too many things and not enough people, not enough appreciation of people and getting together of people. And uh, I'm going to be talking more about this, but just basically how other cultures, they are more connected in community, especially with their families. And I believe that's why their depression and anxiety rates are so much lower than ours, because America has too much. And we put a priority on possession over people. And you can see it clearly in the amount of people that are lonely, depressed, anxious on medications, you know, struggling just to get up in the morning because we don't encourage and lift each other as much as we need to. And that's, I feel called to share about this on my channel because I think the more people that give their time to each other, the better because we all need each other. And there's no need for all of us to be so lonely when there's so many other people that are feeling lonely. <laughs> Rose says, I don't like kombucha, but I try to drink a little bit every so often because I know it's good for me. Brew Doctor has some good flavors. Oh, okay. I think I've tried Brew Doctor. I didn't have anything bad to say about that one. My social life. I'm poverty stricken as well, but it has been a gift in disguise. Oh, interesting. I've heard that from other people though. Like, uh, if you, like, if you think about somebody like Mother Teresa, who, you know, was, didn't care about possessions. She cared about people. I think sometimes it is a gift that's given. It may not feel like a gift, you know, when you have lack, uh, but we're all called to different things. Taylor says, my, uh, my mom was a nun before she met my dad, raised Roman Catholic, believe in God, don't go to church. Mom and dad lived to help others. I live like them. That's awesome. That's awesome. My, uh, my aunt was a nun as well until she passed. She was in her 90s. Cheryl says, I love the saying, if you have a choice uh, to be right or kind, always choose to be kind. I love it. And I agree. Kindness will really, you know, really squash a lot of things. Reigns of Healing, Scandinavian life is usually more minimalist. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, and again, nothing wrong with it. If you If you enjoy that, if you just like to have a mat on the floor, you know, a light fixture, and a little side table in your whole life and you love it, that's great. But don't expect other people to love it. <laughs> it's okay to have stuff in your side table drawer. It's okay to have a few more things if that's what you like. 
Ballerina 11 AA. Good news. I'm finally doing it. I'm going to be living out of my car, traveling the U.S. I couldn't afford a van and wait to get one to convert it. So I'm just going to car camp. Congratulations, Ballerina 11 AA. That was your big news. I love it. Oh, there's more. Wait, I will be starting a YouTube channel, making videos and documentaries. Do you have any advice so I don't burn out before getting a bigger vehicle? Was there a lot of upsides on living out of your car? Yeah, I loved it. I love living out of my car. I, I could have done it for much longer. Um, obviously, the downside, the biggest downside for me was not having a toilet. But now there's things that you can add in your car. They have this little like thing you can put on your seat. And it's like a, almost like a bedpan, but it looks like a toilet seat. I think if you figure out ways to do like the basics, you know, showering and going to the bathroom and stuff like that, it won't be that hard. The biggest challenge would probably be staying cool or staying warm especially staying cool in the summer but other than that i think you'll be fine and i say save as much money as you can as much money as you can so that you can move on to a bigger space but um take it one day at a time and there, i don't think there's anything wrong with starting out in a car i thought it was a great start for me and i loved it i really loved it and congratulations uh i'm really excited for you and your channel um, Lee says, I mean, I only buy what I need and I'm very into the outdoors. So I spend on gear and travel. I mean, yeah, if you get what you love, you know, that's okay. Um, Grant says, I may like my stuff, but I also like to give to others because I can. Yes. And Grant and his wife is, are very generous in giving. I can attest to that for sure. And that's what I'm saying is like, you can have your stuff, but also don't forget other people too. It's just a balance. Again, moderation, moderation, minimalism. Um, do they make a van washer and dryer? You know what, Lee? They do. Uh, I actually, I don't have one, but I've I've been hit up by sponsor, like by companies to uh, have them send me those things to to try them to sponsor the, like sponsor a video. Uh, I don't have a lot of room, so I probably wouldn't do that. I would probably just say go to a laundromat. It's going to be easier. And I didn't really need to do my laundry like that often. I think, you know, I don't know, once every couple of weeks, because I will wear the some things a little bit, a few more times. And then I have, I'm not a minimalist, so I have a few more extra things to wear. And then I would just do like one huge load at the laundromat and then it wouldn't be that bad. So I'd say they do make those things, but I, I wouldn't worry about those things way out of line saw your shirt on uh, not being afraid any advice for those of us who get in our own heads and freak ourselves out while trying to fall asleep on the road uh, i think that's an internal practice i think everything is mental everything i think if you can manage uh and try to grab a hold of those thoughts and say one of my friends rachel um she wrote a book and i think she mentions like she says, thank you for the, thank you for the thought, but I don't need that. Or thank you for this thought, but you know, no, thank you. I think when you have those thoughts, try to come, try to figure out where that's stemming from and just be like, that's not a real thought. That's not really happening right now. It, it could happen, but it, you know, most likely it won't. And if it did, then I'll just have to deal with it. Cause I'm not going to, for me, I'm not going to go through my life being afraid and worried and missing out because this life is going to be over. And then I'm going to be like, dang, I wish I would have done more things. But that fear will grip you if you let it. It's a it's a practice, you know. Um, don't freak yourself out. There's like, I mean, I know it's easier said than done, but there's plenty of like content out there, YouTubers or courses or, you know, all kinds of things that talks about how to get out of your head and how not to be in fear. And it's just doing the work. If you're the type of person that, just has that in your head, you're going to have to work at it. And over time, you can overcome that thought. A short. Oh, short. Okay. I was like, I didn't know I had a shirt, but okay. Okay. The short. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. We're going to, I'm going to respond to these last couple comments and then we're going to wrap up for the day because I'm ready to have some tortellini, to be honest. Um, Reigns of healing. It's also relative to a degree. One person's minimalism is another's hoarding or excess with shortages in distribution, not a bad idea to have a little extra for ourselves or others in need. I agree with that. And everyone has their own line, you know. 
uh, like you said, somebody might think whatever, 10 shirts is too much. Somebody might think that 100 shirts is not even enough. And it's okay. People can choose it for themselves. It's just when people start going overboard and being like, how dare you have 100 shirts? You know, let the person have 100 shirts. It's okay. Like if they want to have 100 shirts, you know, I may not agree with that. I think that's too many shirts. But I don't need to tell somebody, you need to get rid of your shirts. Now, if I was married to somebody, I'd be like, bro, can you like not have 100 shirts? But if it makes them happy and that's like the number one thing in their life, have 100 shirts. <laughs> uh, but I agree with you on that. Um, Rose says, the Bible says we are to take our thoughts captive. We control what we think of. You are in control of your thoughts. Yes, the Bible does say that to take every thought captive and make it like basically make it a slave to you, like to you, like you're the person thinking those thoughts. You have control over your thoughts. I mean, you don't have control that the thoughts come. Thoughts are going to come. You don't control that. Thoughts are going to come. But once they get there, you can be like, no, thank you. I don't, I'm not, I'm not into that. Uh, way out of line. Love that approach. And Rachel's simple phrase to tell myself, I will try. Awesome. Love it. Valerina 11 double A. Thanks guys. I will start it under a different channel account. Hopefully I will be able to let you guys know. Yes, please. I love the snack pack. Hopefully I can meet Allison one day. Awesome. Yes. Uh, yeah. Whenever we have these live streams and you pop in, just tell us your new channel and we'll, you know, I'll shout it out. JJ says, I went on my first trip last month. I thought I would be terrified. I feel safer in my van than in my home. It was so peaceful. Oh, I love to hear it. Yeah, sometimes we hype ourselves up and we're just like afraid for no reason. And it's like, oh, I don't know why I was so upset about this. So that's awesome to hear that, JJ. Brandy says, I'm glad to see you during your live stream. I hope you have a wonderful evening and thank you. Thank you so much. Lucy on the go. Have a wonderful weekend. Very wise and comforting life. Thank you, Austin. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear it. I'm so glad you guys came to the live stream today. Thank you for all the hearts and the new things that are popping up on the screen. That was really encouraging. Um, I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, I love the snack pack. I love our community. I love how we lift each other up. Please continue to pray for little Pearl and Mimi's family. It's just got to be such a hard thing to go through. Uh, pray for each other as I pray for you. Um, I, I just hope you guys have the most awesome week. We will be back next Friday again for the live stream. Um, I have a video coming out tomorrow and a, a few others next week. Um, and I'll be back next Friday for the another, for another live stream. Um, and again, for those that missed it at the beginning, after next Friday, I'm going to be taking off like two weeks of live streams, but you'll still see videos. So it's not that big of a deal, but for me, it will be a big deal. <laughs> Uh, let me read these last comments and then we're going to wrap it up. Hey, Kat, I totally agree with being tired of the extremes. I try to follow veganism, but if I call myself a vegan, I know someone will jump out and show me somewhere where I fail at being vegan. You know, Kat, that's so funny because the video I'm posting tomorrow, I use veganism as an example or vegetarianism. So watch that video tomorrow because I say that exact point because it's like almost like not enough if you know, if you don't do it exactly the right way. So uh, thank you for that, that message. Uh, hey, Julie, uh, thank you so much. Uh, happy Passover to those who, who are celebrating Passover as well. Yes, prayers for Pearl. Um, thank you, Reigns of Healing. Uh, enjoy your weekend as well. Um, <laughs> I'll be back next Friday. Uh, thank you so much, Charlotte. Uh, I, I hope you guys have a great, wonderful weekend. Uh, Jesus is alive. He is risen indeed. I hope you guys have a blessed weekend. Uh, a blessed rest of your Friday and I will see you guys on the next one until next time. Bye for now. Love you guys.